previously in Breaking Point. Aidan, please tell us, how does it feel to be on the verge of getting behind the wheel for your very first race? I feel like a little kid. I look around and I'm surrounded by my heroes. And tell me about Casper Ackerman. How is that relationship coming along? It wasn't my fault. Well, whose fault was it then? He tried to stop them from signing you. Didn't want to play babysitter. We all feel sorry for you, mate. You never stood a chance with him. I had a call this morning from Christian Horner. You're being watched. You know what his problem is, don't you? Thinks you're getting too old. You want respect? You give respect! That's how it works! How about you give me a little respect? How about you earn it first? I'm done. You what? I'm retiring. Why didn't it work out between you two? He's on more money than me. What? He didn't want me on the team. Didn't I? And you thought I was past my best. So none of this is true? There's always gossip in the paddock. And ever since he's arrived, it's been one man at the center of it all. I want us to push for fourth. I want us to beat Butler. And I want that seat to go to you. So Alfa Romeo potentially on track to really upset Alfa Tauri here. Butler's closing in on Ackerman. Down the inside he goes, and they hit each other. Butler into the barrier, and that looks to be the end of the race for him. The Dutchman looks to be continuing, and It's great to see him still in this fight, Crofty. Got the third eight. What about Casper? We let Aiden pass. Let Aiden pass. We did it. We did it. Have you seen the crash yet? Butler's OK. Bruised ego, perhaps. <laughs> like bringing a brand new team to the F1 grid? You know, the first time you see a car, your car, with your branding, your name on it, in an official race, alongside Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, that's what it's all about. You make it sound like a dream come true. If only. When did you first get a sense of what was in store for Connor Sport? 2022 season, <clears throat> straight out of the box. The drivers were always going to clash. That was a calculated risk. But the car, mm, the car, the car had problems. We're midway through the Miami Grand Prix. It's been a cracking race so far, and it's all up for grabs. Absolutely, Crofty. Some fantastic driving here today. Especially, I have to say, from Aidan Jackson. I don't think I've ever seen the Connor Sport car being put through its paces quite like this. This is a team, Connor Sport, that have got a lot to prove this season, but Jackson might just be the man to do it. I'm losing power. Why am I losing power? Copy that, we see it, we're looking into it. Okay, I'm afraid you're gonna have to retire the car, please, Aiden. Retire the car. Uh, you're joking! I'm sorry, Aiden. Pull over now, please. Pull over now. This is getting ridiculous! And that's agonizing for Jackson. Just a few laps left to go, and he's out of the Miami Grand Prix. Oh, with every race, the car looks like a constant problem for Connor Sport. It must be devastating for the drivers. Confirmation as the car comes to a halt, the Connor Sport's Aidan Jackson won't be seeing the chequered flag today. But it looks like his teammate will. Jackson's DNF puts Devon Butler in a position where he might just be able to secure some points for Connor Sport. Aiden's out. Yep, engine problem, I'm afraid. <laughs> Good job you got me! All right, Devon, don't push it too hard. We cannot risk losing both cars here. It's in the bag, mate. All OK, Aiden? <sighs> yeah, uh, how's Devon doing? Yeah, he's doing all right, mate. He looks like he's going to bring home some points for the team. Good for him. If it's not one thing, then it's another. Did you not see what happened out there today? Aiden, I agree with you 100%. We are doing everything we can. I know the car is not perfect, but... Andreo, it's every race. 
Do you know how I look losing easy points like this? Knock, knock. <laughs> Sounds like there's a right show going on in here. What am I missing? Not now, Devon. Aiden and I were just discussing issues with the car. Again? I thought that was all in hand. I, I had no problems today. Smooth. You know what they say? A shoddy workman always blames his tools. <laughs> mate, 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 mate. You can look at my setup data anytime you want. I've told you that. It might help. And I've told you before. It's not a setup issue. The problem is... Jackson, that was the problem with the 2022 season. Ask anyone. I mean, at the end of 21, everyone thought Aiden was going to be signed by one of the big three. But uh, I guess they couldn't reach an agreement, so we both signed for Connor Sport. And do you think that affected Aiden? <laughs> That's no secret. Now, for that 22 season, Jackson was a nightmare. Into turn two we go now. Butler comes out of the pit lane. Jackson is right there with him. This is dicey, Ant. Neither one of these two wants to give way. This would have been a lot cleaner if Jackson had just let him go. He's just not giving him an inch. They continue onwards, still wheel to wheel, almost touching there as well, as we head down the straight towards the next chicane. Nothing to separate either car, and through the chicane we go. And now Jackson sends them both off the track, and Butler over a curb. That looked nasty. And I do believe that one of their cars is damaged here, Crofty. I think it's Butler. Damage, Ant, but also they've lost places too. Unbelievable and totally unnecessary as well. Well, one damaged car, places now to make up. What a complete mess that was. Been a day of drama here at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve today. But Ant, what stood out for you? Well, it must be the Connor Sport moment between the two drivers there. Banging wheels, not giving each other room on track. It was entertaining, of course but definitely for the wrong week. Yeah, we enjoyed it, certainly. And Aidan Jackson, well, he'd have enjoyed the result. He did well to recover. He did do well to recover, but, you know, you never want to see two cars, if, if you're the team boss, seeing two cars hit each other. It's rule number one. Don't hit your teammate. Given all the problems they've had this season, though, getting one car over the finish line, that's probably a big result for them today. Uh, hey there, can you uh, raise that lamp about six inches, right? Excellent. A butler should always look sharp. <laughs> so. At what point in the 22 season was it clear to you that the team was struggling? Oh, well, right after the Hungarian GP. I may only be the money, but even to me it was obvious. The whole thing was a sham. Yet again, Connor Sports Jackson and Butler battling it out on track. It seems as if Hang on they... two secs, Nat. OK, Devon, Aiden's lapping faster than you. I need you to let him pass, please. Devon, do you copy? Listen to me, I need you to let Aiden pass now. Butler just completely blanking the order there. Seems like he didn't even acknowledge it. Too true, but as you can see, no way through for Jackson. No way at all. This Connor Sport rivalry is getting heated on the track here in Hungary. So, Nats, who else out there deserves a mention today? Well, I feel like there are a couple, but let's start with Aidan Jackson. Couldn't agree more. Jackson had a brilliant race, didn't he? Yeah, we know Connor Sport has struggled all season. Jackson's done really well today, and that's in spite of the problems with his own teammate. Even before they became teammates, these two had their fair share of run-ins. It's a fascinating rivalry. You can't take your eyes off it for one moment. But nonetheless, some much-needed points today for Connor Sport. OK, I'll leave that in your capable hands. <sighs> Devon. You had a problem with a team order today? Didn't happen. What? Look, I know everyone's saying I ignored it, but it didn't happen. I never got the order. Check the comms. A shoddy workman always blames his tools, eh? Check the comms. 
Okay, we check the communication pipeline. Fix it. This cannot happen again. Typical. Aiden, listen. What's the point? It's just Devon being Devon. And what? That makes it okay? He's an arrogant... No, you're right to call him out. But imagine if we didn't give him certain freedoms. He'd be even harder to manage. As his father, I know. Aiden, you're the best driver that we have. And it's right for you to put Devon in his place. He needs it. The team needs it. Thanks. Between you and me, I don't think this team is right for me. I think... Honestly, we don't deserve you. And I know that you've been discussed at other teams, so just keep doing what you're doing. Sure. I'm sorry if I've spoken out of turn. About Devon? <laughs> Not at all. You know the best way to keep Devon in his place? What's that? Beat him. So what about Callie Mayer? Was she on your radar at this point? Of course. She was making big waves in F2. And Ackerman would not shut up about her. Here's our race leader, Callie Mayer. She has been blisteringly fast around Zandvoort here today. And look at that! She's going into pit! Interesting strategy they've decided on there. She has been lapping at rapid pace, but is this the right call? Yeah, it's a bold move for sure. Looks crazy to me, but let's find out. Here she goes then on brand new tyres. The rest of the field still sticking with their original set. Where exactly does Callie Mayer come out? Let's see. Take a bow, what a masterclass to finish first here in the Netherlands. It was such an unlikely strategy from Mayer, but she and the team have made a success of it. What a race, what a performance, what a genuine joy to watch. Kelly, what do you put your success down to this season? Oh, I'd say probably my speed. In what way? I find lapping faster than everyone else really, really helps. Casper, <laughs> Casper. No, 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 no. Seriously, though, I have a great team around me, and this guy, more than anyone else, has been pretty useful to have around. <laughs> Casper, what are you shy? Come up here. Yes, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And Callie says you've been a factor this season, Casper. I'm not the one driving. Didn't agree with my tyre strategy, though. <laughs> this one has no respect for her elders. <laughs> but can you give us more detail as to the exact role that you're playing, Casper? None whatsoever. It's all about her. He's probably right, to be fair. So, were you already in touch with Casper Ackerman at that point? <laughs> Ackerman and I go way back. Another pit stop here at Suzuka. This time it's Aidan Jackson coming in. He's been making steady progress today and Connor Sport need him to. They desperately need some results and they could do without this. And look, there's chaos in that garage. Absolutely, only three wheels on the car at the moment, Crofty. Aidan Jackson looks on in despair. Here comes that spare wheel now. That's a long, long time to wait. Just sat in the cockpit. What is going on down at Connor Sport? Well, the tyre is finally out of the garage and on the car, and Aidan Jackson's back out in the race, but it's a long time in the pit, and that will cost them dearly. Still too close to call at the top of the table. Meanwhile, at the other end, that you can really understand Aidan Jackson's frustrations today. Yeah, they've had car problems all season long, Crofty. They've had a bad mix-up in the garage today. Connor Sport won't be proud of that one. And Connor Sport won't be proud of that. It's the longest pit stop we've had this season. Not the sort of record any team wants to set. You saw it, right? The pit stop? How am I supposed to deal with that? I know, I want a chance to prove what I can do, though. In a top-tier seat, I deserve it. 
I've heard there might be interest. I just... I can't stay here. Okay. Well, what would you do? So, what advice did you give him? Well, I told him to try to stay calm, see out the season, and then go to the final team meeting. See if that changed his mind. And where were you at this point? Oh, I was uh, busy getting Cali ready for the final race of the F2 season. The final race of the season now well underway here in Abu Dhabi. A few different drivers in contention for the F2 championship. But here's the favourite, Cali Mayer. She's been so consistent this season, so fast. My money's on Mayer for the championship, no question. If she can finish high enough, the title belongs to her. Yes! Yes! Woo! Come on! <laughs> yes, Kelly! That was amazing! Congratulations! Kelly yeah. Mayer, get used to the name. She has her whole career ahead of her, and this is just the beginning. She's done it, as many predicted she would. A star is born. Callie Mayer becomes the first woman ever to win the F2 Championship. Historic. <laughs> well, I mean, someone had to be the first. But I just hope that this shows that talent can get you as far as money. And what about your dad? Is he cool to congratulate you yet, Kelly? Nope. Next question. Hey, Kelly, Kelly, what's it like being a woman in motorsports? We're sure everyone wants to know. <sighs> I don't know, John. What's it like being a man in journalism? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hot-headed. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. But, you know, that's, that's kind of what you need in a driver. Let's not forget that Kelly taking the championship was a big deal. You know, for, well, for the sport, but really for everyone. And for you, how did you feel? It was one of the proudest moments of my career. It was the first time I mentored anyone. Yeah. I was a little sad to be moving on. So, had you already told Callie about your new job? Yes, yes, of course. And I told her, you know, how I wished that I could take her with me. She understood. And Aidan, had you told him? No. No, he was, um, he was too busy. Busy? Yeah, preparing to tell the team that he was leaving Connorsport. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know Aidan had something he wanted to say, but first, I have a matter I would like to address formally. It is no secret that I have been spread a little thin <laughs> this season. I mean, I own the team, I run the team, it's, it's a lot, okay? Which is why I will be stepping away from the principal role next season. I'll still be pushing Connor Sport Racing to be the brand we know it can be, whilst the new principal will be laser focused on performance and results. And we have already found a man to step into that role. Kasper. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, this is a big step up for me. I'm really looking forward to see what next season brings. It's truly an honor to be on board. I am sorry for the dramatic nature of the announcement, okay? Humor the man who pays you. <laughs> we all look forward to working with Casper, yes? Good. Then let us continue. Aiden, you had something you wanted to say? The floor is yours. Uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I just wanted to say, <clears throat> um, thank you, everybody, for all your hard work this year. And I'm really looking forward to next season, especially with Casper at the helm.
Did Casper being around affect you going into the 23 season? I have bigger things going on than Casper. Do you have any regrets about 2023? Anything you'd have done differently? No. No, I'm in a good place now. Besides, what's to uh, regret about being the story of the season? Meanwhile, plenty of surprises in the midfield. So where do we start, Ant? Well, I think we have to look at Connor Sport. And for me, they've been the biggest surprise so far. And Butler, he's doing fantastically well. Thing is, though, they've got to sustain that over the course of the whole season. And that is easier said than done. Certainly what Kasper Ackerman will be hoping that this season is better than his last. Great race out there today, just in the highlights. Listen, I know we've had our run-ins and well, last season was last season. Thomas Ward's got a real time. Cast on board, new driving like that. Let's get a pass to him. A fresh start for the team. What do you say? Huh, oh, Jackson. Yeah, cheers, mate. Bin's over there. Yeah. Nice one. season just gone the 2023 season was completely different for Connor Sport. how so but, uh, the car for one we'd ironed out the most critical issues and it was just starting to live up to its potential can we talk about what happened with Devon Here comes Butler, good pace here down the straight. Into the corner we go, that's a little too late and he nearly goes off the track on the exit. Ant, is that a lapse in concentration? I think just a little bit of desperate driving there, Crofty. He's pushing way too hard. I mean, there's nobody else around him at this stage. OK, Devon, we're going to have to ease off from the brakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brakes don't feel right. OK, we'll have a look at it, but you're going to see a drop off in performance, I'm afraid. What? Why? We've asked you to take it easy on the last lap, but pushing has made the issue even worse. So we're just going to have to live with it for now. What are you talking about? Listen, just do what you can, please, Devon. Come on. This isn't the first time we've seen Devon Butler go rogue, but the question is, what are Connor Sport going to do about it? Well, it's really hard. As we've seen so many times before, Crofty, in the past, so hard to control your drivers. In a way, they're their own entity, but on the top of it, they're, they're working for the team, and that's what you want. Very hard situation to manage. And working for the team, Kasper Ackerman wanted to make a clean break for this year. This does feel, though, that it's something that they might have had to have dealt with last season. It's really not what they wanted. A repeat of what happened in the past, and you cannot let it go on. Can't continue. They're just damaging the reputation of the team and their own reputation as well. They have to sort it out. I'm sure they'll be having words. So it's all changed here in Australia, and as the teams acclimatise to their new standings, so will we. No, it's a, well, it's a big deal when one of your drivers decides to do their own thing. So I called him out on it at the next team meeting. And what was Devon's reaction? Well, he denied the whole thing. You know, blamed it on a comms fail. Which I thought was strange. The same thing happened the year before when I was principal, and he gave the exact same excuse. Yeah? He wanted to see me. Ah, there he is. You're a difficult man to pin down. Right, I'll cut uh, right to the chase, Devon. Tell me what's happening. What are you talking about? Well, it's not just disregarding team orders. Paddock talks. People are saying you've been distracted, that you're ignoring them completely. <laughs> now, my job is to make sure the team works smoothly, like clockwork, so. Just trying to work out what's going on. I told you, check the comms. Yeah, the comms are fine, Devon. We checked. What's going on? Nothing. Just cut that out. Show me some respect now. Okay. I heard the order. All right? 
You happy? Why ignore it? I'm feeling it, Cass. The pressure. Paddock gossip these last couple of months. Oh, come on. You're Devon Butler. You are the Paddock gossip. <laughs> You've heard what they're saying, right? You've seen what they're writing. Driving on Daddy's money. It's, uh... It's making me second-guess myself. Okay. We can work through that. Start changing the... the team narrative. Absolutely. But in the meantime, I'd like you to see someone from the medical team. Just to be sure. I've booked you in for this afternoon. No, no, Cass, Cass. Look, I I've got a race to prep for, okay? I need my head in the game. I'm fine. I get that. That's fine. But I want you to see them straight after the race. Understood? Yeah. Fine. Devon Butler now. Oh, that's not good! Oh no! Devon Butler spins! He's out! Oh, he just misjudges it and clips the curb. What a mess! Devon Butler, with that move, is out of the race. He won't want to see that too many times. We want to see him out of the car, though. That's good news. Big relief there. Although he does still look a bit unsteady on his feet, Crofty. Well, thumbs up to the crowd, but I'd imagine after that, he'll be quite shaken. It was his hearing. He'd been keeping it from us. I think maybe he'd been trying to keep it from himself. I mean, he was at the height of his career. Yeah, what can you say? How did you feel? I, I was devastated. <sighs> but, uh, five years in F1. Can't argue with that. I mean, most people never even get the chance, so. And I was still one of the best while I was out there. You ask anyone. How did you feel when Devon left? How did I feel? But if we are going to hit our targets, we need another driver. A permanent one. And fast. But we are mid-season. It's impossible. So, given the circumstances, do you think you can grant us a bit of leeway on the contract? I have the projections. If Connorsport doesn't reach fifth place in the constructors this season, the returns simply aren't worth my time. That was always the deal. And it still is. But with a little extra time, perhaps we... Stop! The deal stands. And without Devon driving, there's now little of interest for me beyond the contract. It's just business. There must be something we can do. So, legacy is obviously important to you, Davidoff. As a father, I, I totally get that. So if Devon, your son, can't drive, how about your daughter? Why don't we give the seat to Kelly? No. California 
will not be signed to Conispool. Why not? Just... <laughs> just think of the commercial opportunities for the team that signs her, hmm? Forget legacy. <laughs> oh, we'd be... You'd be making history. And you'll be giving a phenomenal talent her first break into F1. It's the right thing to do. Come on, you know she deserves it. The daughter... ...who took her mother's name to spite me. Nah, she'll never say yes. Why don't you leave that to me? Contract still stands, Ackerman. Fifth place, or I'm out next season. One problem at a time, eh? Welcome to the wonderful Catalonia. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend. And whilst the season is just a few races old, it's already been one full of drama. So, Natalie Pinkham, who have you got your eye on this weekend? Well, in Formula One, naturally, the conversation is drawn towards those at the top of the standings, both drivers and teams. But I'm really intrigued by the midfield team of Connor Sport. Devon Butler's absence will definitely be felt. There's no doubt about that, both on and off the track. For me, the interesting thing will be how they move forward without him. Indeed, almost as many battles off the track as there are on it for Connor Sport at the moment. And Kasper Ackerman and his team certainly have their work cut out for them this weekend. I know it's been a mad few weeks, mate, but you've always gone well here, so let's get your head down and see what we can do. Come on. So it's Aidan Jackson propping up Connor Sport here today, but the big news off the track is the speculation about this team and whether or not they'll see out the season with their current lineup. Well, I think they'll have to sign a new driver, Crofty. It's a gamble worth taking. Well, a mid season signing would get us all talking, I'm sure, but time will tell. Why are you hesitating? You've always dreamt of racing in F1. Not like this. Do you know what he did? Oh, your father? He refused to support me. Said he'd only fund one of his children. Said Devon had better prospects. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Mum used the divorce settlement to help me out, but... And you're only here because he sent you. No. This was my idea, my decision. And this is me asking you, Callie, not your father. We need a replacement and ask for you because I know how good you are. And that's the truth. I always said I'd do it on my terms, not his. I'll look out for you, just like I did in F2. Will you keep him away from me? I'll do everything in my power, everything, to make sure that all you have to think about is driving. Have we got a deal? You might never get this opportunity again. You know that. History is made here today as Callie Mayer, Connor Sport's latest signing, becomes the first female driver of the modern era to participate in an F1 race. What a moment. I've got goosebumps. Now, for those of you wondering at home, only a handful of women have entered at least one Grand Prix over the years, but none have even had the opportunity to qualify since 1992. Italy's Giovanna Amati, for those of you wondering. So today is very much a new dawn here in Baku. And Maya was impressive in qualifying, so let's see what the Grand Prix has in store for her. Yeah, I have to say, it is quite a tight-knit pack out there. Fierce competition all round. I really wouldn't want to call this one. Indeed. We've seen some brilliant driving here today, especially from young Callie Mayer. She seems to have made the transition to F1 as if she was born for it. Here comes Callie Mayer, closing in on her teammates. She's practically on top of me. Aiden, calm down. You're on different strategies. Just let Callie pass. 
Okay, Kelly. Aiden's going to let you pass at the next corner. Let's go. Copy. Will Mayer get past her teammate now? Here she comes with this contact. Contact between the two Connor Sport drivers. Jackson's out. He gets the worst of it. Mayer's clear. Oh, Jackson's damage looks bad. I think you're right, Crofty. His race is over. Mayer seemed to catch Jackson unawares, though. I'm not sure why. What was that? Why didn't she wait for me to move over on the exit? OK, Aiden, are you all right? It's just another butler. I thought he was letting me through. Yeah, I know, Callie. I'm sorry about that, but it's happened now. It's over. Let's get your head down and focus. Come on, we'll talk about it later. Despite of the drama amongst those at the top of the standings, so much of the discussion today has centred around Connor Sport. Absolutely. A bittersweet race for them today. One historic debut, one DNA. I mean, you couldn't write it. And talking of that debut, what did you make of Callie Mayer's first ever start? Well, I am so excited to see Callie racing in F1. It is great for the sport. She is a phenomenal talent. I can't wait to see what the season holds and her career as a whole. And if today is anything to go by, the name Callie Mayer is one that we'll be watching with a lot of interest for many years to come. And do you feel extra pressure at Connor Sport? It must be difficult with your dad looking over your shoulder. <sighs> Look, it's F1. It's not possible for me to feel any more pressure than I already do. So, no, it's not an issue. Kelly, have you felt any pushback from anyone in the F1 world, just with you being the first female driver in the sport? No, everyone's been amazing. And I'm not the first, I'm just the latest. How's your brother? Are you really just keeping his seat warm? Uh, you'd have to ask him that, um, but he is getting the help that he needs. And no, I have no intention of giving up this seat. What happened out there between you and Aiden today? Uh, it's just a mix-up. Um, I, I thought he was letting me through on the entry, but he clearly had other ideas. We spoke to him earlier, and he said he was deliberate on your part. Any comments on that? Uh, it was just a misunderstanding. You've always gone by Mayer, and now you're in a team financed by your father, driving in your brother's seat. Would you go back to the butler name? Should have expected it, right? I thought you did. That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm a woman. I get it. I'm happy to talk about it. And what is it? Well, it's always the same, isn't it? So you're a woman, and then every question about Dad, about Devon, about the butler, name. Just forget about it. Oh, I can never get away from it, can I? The only question about the race was about Aiden. Well, you know, maybe if we'd let it run a little longer, there would have been... Casper? Don't defend them. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. <sighs> Look, it's fine. I'll be faster next time. The incident at Baku, do you think she did it on purpose? She did do it on purpose. Yeah, check the footage. So you didn't warn to her? We weren't the best of friends, no. You see, this is just another example of the Connor Sport drivers antagonizing each other. Yeah, but you've got to look at Ackerman as well. He's the one that can sort this situation out so far that he's letting them run wild. His job is to keep control. And no matter what the season, no matter what the driver, Connor Sport just can't seem to gel as a team. So you've got to ask the question, really, what will it take? I did not like Aiden. Not at all. <laughs> Why not? I thought he was immature about what happened in Baku. I, like, I never really got over it. He was aggressive on track, and the paddock talks. He just wasn't happy at Connor Sport. Thought he was too good for the team. He just had a bit of an attitude problem. It's already complicated, and I've told you they don't need to know. Well, it's your call, of course. But the dishonesty makes me uncomfortable. We'll talk about it later. Yes? Let's make this quick. Or maybe we could give Casper a bit of our time. This wasn't scheduled. What, are you too busy for us now? Just tell them, Casper. Andreo, please. Can we get started? Yeah, Aiden's got a meeting at Mercedes he needs to get to. Enough! Enough! Okay? This... This is what we have to talk about. It has to stop, understand? If we can't pull together now... If we can't pull together, we are finished. Wait, 
What does that mean? Andreo? It means that if we don't finish fifth or higher, Butler Global will pull funding. And I don't think we'll find an investor to replace him. Not now. Wait, what? Casper? Yeah, it's true. Well, then we're finished. Andrea? We're finished! So, yeah. Dad brought me onto the team and then immediately threatened to shut it down. Why would he do that? It's kind of his thing. Okay, Kelly, I'm sure you've got questions, but we think we know what we're doing here. We've got information that says more rain's coming, and so, because we're the first ones to come and make this change, we can turn it into an advantage. So on your outlap, let's make it all count. Copy that. Congratulations, Kelly. You keep going like that, you might just prove me wrong yet. Kelly? Well, we said at the time that it might have been too soon, but in hindsight, Cobblesport really did make the right call. May have made the pit stop, changed to wet tyres ahead of everybody else. That was a real turning point in the race. Yeah, you've got to get these decisions right, and not everyone did today. It's great to see Cobblesport taking their chances like that. Wonderful race by Mayer. If they want to improve on last season, they've got to try and do something different. Well, they did that today, they timed it well. Mayer, well, she continues to impress. Callie, great race. What do you mean, prove you wrong? I was just trying to congratulate you, that's all. Prove you wrong about what exactly? I didn't mean anything by it. I was just saying well done. By reminding me how little you actually believe in me. Callie. You are a piece of work. But it was a great race. You said you'd keep him away from me. I'll talk to him. How is he getting involved on comm? Well, he didn't ask, he just did it. Yeah, he'll do whatever he wants until someone stops him. <laughs> I said I'll talk to him. That was a great result out there today. Let's forget about your father, okay? Yeah. Good. Looks like he's found someone else to talk to anyway. Everything else looks fine. It's just about that rear wing. I don't want to sacrifice any more downforce. It's okay, it's your call. Now, let's uh, check the weather again in an hour. Oi, oi! <laughs> Did you miss me? Hello, sis. Hi, bro. Jackson. Devon. How are you, Devon? I am excited. Very excited to be involved again. Now, you, you pretend I'm not here, you carry on, please. Involved? How? Oh, you know, just uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of... Uh... Involved? How? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Huh. And what does Andreo say to that? He'll agree, Casper. It's fine. Were they pleased to see you? People are always pleased to see me. And what was your new role? Uh, I guess you might call me a liaison. Yeah, I just, I love to liaise. Dad wanted me to talk to people, keep people's spirits up, give some friendly words of advice, that kind of thing. But, uh, it was tough. Yeah, Aiden still had that ego. Still thought he was too good for the team. Wouldn't listen to Casper's advice, that was a problem. And then Andreo... He was worried about the future of the team. He had Dad breathing down his neck. And Callie? Well, let's just say Callie wasn't really looking for my advice. The whole thing was a mess. I mean, honestly, I'd only been gone five minutes. The two Connor Sport teammates not exactly doing each other any favours this afternoon. For me, they're a little bit too close for comfort. What is Aiden playing at? Tell him to back off. OK, Kelly, he knows. Clearly he doesn't know. <sighs> yeah, same old stuff. Jackson really wants to make a move out there, but may no chance, not letting him pass. Towards the curve of Grande we go. He's going for it. It's really close. It's too close. There goes Mayer's front wing. Oh, Aiden Jackson, what happened there? This 
now seems like a running theme at Connor Sports. Yes, this race is critical for them. When are they going to just pull themselves together? OK, box please, Kelly. Let's get that wing replaced. This is a joke. Box this lap, please. Box this lap. Yeah, copy. So may have managed to pull it back in the end. But if this continues, Connor Sport are in real danger of sabotaging their own chances of a decent finish this season. There is so much talent in that team, and yet they're their own worst enemy. The reason they're not making progress is each other. Ridiculous state of affairs. And it's clear that Jackson continues to be the aggressor. Is it personal, Natalie? Well, you know, it does seem that way from the outside looking in, but all I know is they just can't go on like this. Slanging off. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> Scared the life out of me, mate. Ah, I didn't mean to. Picking up any tips? I don't think they like the short straights here. You didn't mind them, did you? <sighs> I love this track. Always do well here. Huh? Well, used to. How are you doing, Devin? Me? Golden, mate. Loving life. Yeah, sure. You know what it's like to leave all this behind, don't you? Yeah, it's the most difficult thing I've ever done. Yeah, well, uh, like that. But, uh, I didn't choose this, Casper. I didn't, um, I didn't. I know. You came back, right? How's it treating you? Ups and downs. Hmm. How's our old teammate doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he's happy here. <laughs> he still thinks he belongs in that top team, see? He's never let it go. That's the problem. You know, I, uh... I could have a word with him. I mean, if you think that might help. It's, uh... It's all a bit dead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I understand. No, Devon, I mean it. Eh? Scout's on him, mate. Did Casper really want you to talk to Aiden? Eh, I read between the lines. Look, Casper's good at lots of things, but I, uh, I know people. Yeah, I know how to get in their heads. And I wanted to help Dad, help the team, so... Uh... Leave me alone. Listen, I'm just saying, mate, if you were such an incredible driver, you wouldn't be a Connorsport, would you? Sorry, it's the truth. No offence. Well, maybe I won't be here next season. <laughs> oh, dude. You know what your problem is? Yeah. You. You think you're better than the team. I remember I remember when Aiden Jackson was just, just happy to be behind the wheel of an F1 car. We all liked that guy far better than this one. You never liked me. <sighs> no. But Casper did. Once upon a time. Oh, you're different now. You think you're too good for the team. Your head's stuck in some imaginary big three seat in Cloud Cuckoo Land, mate. No, no, no. You have got to drive the car you're in. You're lecturing me about ego. A subject I know well. Oh, right. I get it. So you're allowed to be cocky, but I'm not. Is that it? There's a difference. How can there possibly be a difference? This isn't you. This isn't you, mate. Oh, get lost. Be true to myself. Drive the car I'm in. The wisdom of Devon Butler. Should I be living my best life, too? Just drive the car you're in, mate, yeah? Ciao. Well, it's a beautiful night here at the Marina Bay Circuit, and as ever, a really enthralling Singapore Grand Prix ahead of us.
That's right, Crofty. And while there's not many surprises at the top of the standings right now, there's a lot to watch out for further down the pack. One driver I'll be definitely keeping my eye on is Connor Sports Aidan Jackson. He's been less than consistent so far this season. Aidan, you know what you're doing here. Let's lock in and give it everything. Show us what you got. We did it! We did it! Well, the results are in there. We have it. What a race that was. The sheer grit and determination shown by some of the drivers out there today, Crofty, was nothing short of incredible. Elbows out, especially from Aidan Jackson. Loved his race today, and he finally delivered the sort of performance that we know that he's capable of. So whatever they're saying to him over at Connor Sport, he seems to be listening to. Come on, I just want to chat, Cal. Why? Because he told you to. Stop making this about him, just talk to me. We raced in a lot of the same races growing up, and one of us would always have a better race than the other. So in the car, on the way home, one of us would be happy, and the other would be completely miserable. There was no middle ground. It was like it was impossible for us both to be happy at the same time. And it's kind of been the same ever since. Look, it's my job to talk to the drivers, Callie. Yeah. And who gave you that job? Why are you being like this? It's not even me you're angry with. Maybe it is. Oh, really? This again? We were kids, Callie. You left me behind. Oh, come on, what was I supposed to say? Oh, oh, thanks, Dad, for, for, for continuing to invest in my career, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline, just in case I hurt poor Callie's feet. Of course not. And what? It didn't have to be a choice, Dev. He had the money to fund both of our careers. I just... I wanted you to fight for me. He never listened to me. He always listened to you. Well, we were young. Yeah, but we're adults now. Yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm not much competition anymore. <laughs> you never were. I'm sorry, Kelly. For everything. You were always faster than me. <laughs> there, I said it. Nice try. I mean it. And did you mean it? <laughs> of course not. Faster than me. No, 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 no. She was never faster than me. She'd love that. No. Nah. But if there's one thing my old man taught me, it's that sometimes people need to hear what they need to hear. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I saw him in the paddock. This would have been Sao Paulo. And I, um... Yeah, I finally spoke to him. I just wanted to know... Why? There's something's come up. I'll uh, call you back. Callie, so I'm uh, allowed to talk to you now. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Why are you being so hard line about this? For this to be a worthwhile investment, Connor Sport Racing must be successful. It's just business. It's not, though, is it? Excuse me? Well, why am I on the team if it's just business? Why was Devon? You can't keep involving your family in this and then hiding behind it's just business. This is one of the biggest investments I have ever made. I must take care of the business. Come on. Who do you think will uh, inherit it after I'm gone? Well, Devon, obviously. I'm, I'm not interested in any of it. Matters are complex, Kelly. But they all benefit the business. They all benefit the family. And ultimately, they all benefit you. You said this the last time you tried to stop me racing. I didn't buy it at 12, and I certainly don't buy it now. I don't understand what goes on in that head of yours. 
You threaten to end my F1 career, and then you claim it's for my benefit. Have you any idea how much money I have ploughed into the team? <sighs> yeah, that's the thing with you. Money. Nothing changes. I wouldn't expect you to understand. No, Dad. I wouldn't expect you to. You need to be more realistic, that's all. Not everyone survives in F1. You know that. Fifth in the standings. Fifth. in this lap repeat the safety car is in this lap that means it's our chance to shine come on you can do this let's go no no pressure then well what a fantastic race that was absolutely loved it but natalie do you think we see color sport next season we were safe maybe not i hope so i feel like they deserve it They've been box office for me. They've taken chances, they've been bold in all their moves, and ultimately, that's great for us and for the fans. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more, but there's not much of a season left, and they'll be hoping they can carry this form into the final stages. Time will tell. Okay, so we are running two quite different setups out there today. And you don't need me to tell you how it... You don't need me to tell you how it... Davidoff, that's enough. I'm sorry? Get out. What on earth are you talking about? I've had an entire season of you whispering in people's ears. I'm asking you to leave the meeting. You can't be serious. This is not your team. And after today, it might not even exist. So get out and let those of us who actually care about the result do our jobs. We'll talk about this later, Akana. You can threaten me after the race. So be it. Coming, Devon? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might actually stay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Well, that's up to you. Okay, listen. You all know what's at stake. If we race, as individuals today, the team dies. The only way we can survive this, the only way that any of us are coming back next season, is together. We all understand this? No, no. Aiden, Callie, look at me. You look at me. We understand this, yes? If you put yourself ahead of the team today, there's no more team. Callie, we got this. Yeah. And, um, I'm sorry if I was ever. Wow. What? Are you apologizing? Yeah. <laughs> I will forgive you on one condition. What's that? You get your share of the points. All right. Deal. <laughs> Chin up. You know, before the race begins, anything is possible. Anything. On the one hand, you have the true icons of the sport, certain drivers, certain teams who set the pace, who you expect to do well. On the other hand, you have the underdogs. And we are always there, always pushing for another place, another point, looking for the smallest opportunity, the tiniest mistake we can punish. And in that moment, just before lights out, it's like, it's like the world holds its breath, you know? Everybody just waits. The air is heavy, you know? And I knew whatever happened, corner sport had made its mark on the history of the sport. 
and I was at peace with that. So you weren't nervous? Are you kidding? <laughs> so we know how it stands right now, but just how different might it be when the checkered flag waves here in Abu Dhabi? And it slides out, and away we go. OK, Aiden, let's see if we can start moving through the field. It's time to push. Come on, you've got this. Copy that. Down the main straight we go. Here goes Jackson again, moving up the field. What a great race for him. Yeah, it really is so far, Prof. I mean, it's a circuit he really enjoys. Remember the race in 2021 that he put together there? It was fantastic stuff back then. Who could forget it? Connor Sport need a performance just like that today. May is doing okay. Jackson really delivering. Great stuff, Aiden. Come on, I think we can get one more place here. Push, push. Uh, stuff is not right. Assessing, assessing. Stand by. I'm losing speed. Heading down the back straight now. He's in a great spot, but hang on, he's slowing. He's slowing. Something is very, very wrong. Yeah, I think he's got a problem here, Crofty. I wonder what it is. Could it be engine-related? Look, they're throwing their hands in the air on the pit wall, and he's out. And yeah, that's the engine gone. 2023 is over for Aidan Jackson. It's a dramatic exit, and it wasn't what he was hoping for. Something happened up there? Yeah, engine failure, I'm afraid. Aidan is out of this race. Repeat, Aidan's out of the race. Did you get that? Aidan's out. I heard. What? Let me speak for that. Why? Just give me the headset. Sure about this? I'm sure about everything. Uh, that's what concerns me. Kelly. Devin? Yeah, we've had a chat. We think it's best if you uh, don't push the car too hard. Huh? Why? Look, you're way back, Cal, OK? We, we don't want to blow your engine too, so just, just cruise it in and finish the race. It's got to be realistic here. Copy. Sorry, is this a team order? No. Casper agrees. It's just not going to make up that much ground. It can't be done. Just cruise it in, Cal. Trust me, you watch her go. Incredible performance by her today. Connor Sport, I'm sure, will be very delighted with that one. And if you believe the rumors, Ant, this is a team whose future has been in doubt. Surely, though, they've done enough to return next season. I think they've been wonderful to watch. It was amazing. I'm not sure I've ever seen a race like that. I was wrong about Callie. And how did you feel about the engine failure? There's no such thing as the perfect car. The one that failed us was the same one that got us here in the first place. So, you've just got to drive the car you're in. Well, everyone's an individual. Which means that everyone is, um... motivated a little differently. Take Devon as an example. He always responds well to having his ego brushed, to being told that he's the best. His greatest fear is failure, so it gives him further to fall, keeps him hungry. Callie, on the other hand, uh, has an innate drive to prove people wrong. If someone tells her something's not possible, she'll do everything in her power to achieve it. A sort of uh, stubborn determination that can be harnessed. <laughs> and then there's Aiden. I mean, when he started in F1, People thought he was a nice guy, but he was incredibly ambitious. It's just what makes Aiden tick. 
Which is why I may have started a rumour or two about uh, interest from other teams during his time at Connor Sport. <laughs> to stoke that ambition. Keep his eyes on the horizon. A lot of people might see that as manipulative, wouldn't you agree? Well, of course. <laughs> Motivation is manipulation. It's the same thing. Is it? Look, the end justifies the means. After all, it's just business. Looking forward to next season? Just let me at it. Will you stay next season? I've told Casper I'll stay if he does. Do you still have a job after your run-in with Davidoff? <laughs> well, we'll see. We did it! We secured the funding! What a team! And that's all that matters. <laughs> right now, yes, that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're done? Yeah? Cool.